Hey, it's Peter Reed Miller from On Sports Photography with Peter Reed Miller. And today we have another episode of Ask the Sports Photographer. I'm going to take some questions that I've been asked uh, around the country at my workshops online and answer them for you. So I'm often asked, what do I bring to a game, to an event, to whatever I'm shooting that's not my camera, not my lenses, not my monopod? What extra stuff do I always have in my bag? Uh, number one, I like to have a couple of protein bars uh, just so I can, I, I can know I'm going to get something to eat. Uh, you can get there and go to the media room and the food's all gone. Or the classic, oh, the food will be here five minutes before the game starts. That's a great one. Uh, or you don't want to eat what they're serving, which is more and more the case. So we got to have a little food. Um, usually, most places provide water, but it doesn't hurt to have a water bottle along with you because sometimes they don't, um, especially at the smaller events. Um, I like to take uh, a product called a Hood Loop from Hoodman. Uh, it hangs around my neck, and it's basically, uh, basically a little loop that I can use to look at my LCD display. It's great when it's uh, bright out and you can't really see it. So it's great for that. It's great for checking critical focus. I always have that. Uh, I always have, well, I shoot Canon. So it, it, I have, it's a Canon right angle finder C and it's a right angle finder. Uh, I love the low angle, but I'm not so uh, supple as I was at one point in my life, so I can't always get down, or I don't want to take the time to get down all the way. But with the right angle finder, I can look down in the camera like this, and there's my low angle. Put the camera on the ground, look right into it. Um, I like to have some gum, Kleenex, just a few basic things like that, because basically you're you're out of for four, six, eight hours, you're you're out of touch with anything of normal civilization you're you're in the in the bubble so uh you better have what what you need people ask about uh clothing for games um i live in california uh i am a beach shorts guy i will wear shorts as long as i can well into the 50s and 40 degrees uh with those shorts i wear knee pads i like uh the neoprene, I think it's Mac David. Um, sometimes I'll even put a little um, moleskin on the back to soften it up on my knees. I mean, a beautiful grass field is a wonderful thing to kneel on, but an astroturf field, a field where the end zone is actually part of a baseball diamond, which is torture to kneel on. Um, and if I think there's any chance of inclement weather, I take a pair of rain pants, rolled up, stuff them in my bag, and just a light rain cover. Obviously, if I know it's going to rain, I do a lot more than that. But uh, for basic shooting, uh, maybe in the Midwest in the fall, I always will have a little bit of rain gear, no matter what the forecast is. But the knee pads, crucial. A little bit more about clothing. Don't forget your hat. Uh, even in indoor stadiums, I wear a ball cap. And the reason for that is a lot of times that light is not that high. You don't want it to be that high. And it's going to come right down. It really bugs me. I like to have that, I have, like to have that light shaded. Also, of course, uh, but that's the same thing at night. Even though there's no sun, the lights, I want to I screen them out. And then, of course, in the daytime, the sun, you know, you want to have that. Um, most major events now, we are given bibs to wear. Uh, they vary in quality and size, but I would say mostly they're not designed for comfort. They don't breathe. If it's going to be a hot day, you want to wear a light t-shirt under there, something really light, because you're going to have this, this you know, plastic bib on you the whole time, and you have to have that whenever you're on the field. I have been to events where uh, they have asked photographers to cover logos. Uh, on their caps, on their shirts. It's rare, but it does happen. 
Uh, sometimes it's just an official who gets carried away, but it's, it's been enforced from time to time. So that's a few thoughts about, uh, about clothing. And nah, don't go barefoot. I've been asked about photographers' etiquette at sporting events. Uh, it does exist. Sometimes hard to believe, but it does exist. For example, uh, whenever you're pressed in close at a baseball photo well or at the Olympics and the little photo things, everybody takes off their lens hood. That way, when you swing, you have less chance of being blocked by the person next to you. Hopefully, you all swing at the same time, but sometimes that doesn't happen. Less chance of blocking. Uh, the whole thing about going out on the field at the end of a football game, a big football game, getting the Gatorade dump, uh, a lot's been said about that. Uh, my conclusion is, no matter what rules you make, somebody's always going to break them because they want to get that picture. Uh, personally, I usually try and shoot from the other side. I'm not really into getting into the scrums anymore. Uh, at the Super Bowl, they try and limit the number of people who can get on for a certain amount of time. People have different colored vests. This is a whole thing that, that I think reflects more on the human condition, that there are some people who will do whatever for their self-engrandizement, and there are other people who will follow the rules, and you see that. But by and large, photographers do, especially in the States, do respect each other. Uh, try and be aware of what other people are doing, their shots, not, not distracting. Uh, that's all pretty much true. But when, uh, when the uh, Super Bowl ends, maybe the rules go out the window. You know, I'm asked how sports photography has changed over the time of my career. And uh, probably the two biggest changes were autofocus and then digital. And the combination, the modern uh, digital autofocus camera, and now the technology that allows these cameras and lenses to be produced so inexpensively, means that just about anybody on the planet with a thousand bucks and a Costco card can come to their son's high school football game with a 300 millimeter lens and a, and a high ISO camera and, and shoot. And so that's, that's made it a little more crowded on the sidelines, uh, a little more difficult. Uh, I think it's, you know, and one thing, you still, a true professional is still going to get a better picture, but uh, it's hard to convince some people of that. Another thing uh, in digital uh, versus film, uh, we don't spend any time in the dark room. Uh, we spend it in front of the computer. Is that better? Well, you're in the light and your knuckles don't turn orange, but your eyes still burn. Um, I think the prevalence of editing on the field, you'll see most every, every major sporting event, uh, there's a media photo workroom that's very close to the field, and a lot of guys file after, after every touchdown, running back and forth. Um, to me and to the people I've talked to who have to do that, it, it's a whole different experience shooting a game now. It's, it's, not, it's not getting a sense of the game, it's just getting that picture and running back in there and putting it in and running it through Photo Mechanic and off it goes. Um, that's a whole different deal. Uh, I fortunately don't have to do that myself, but uh, you know, I know a lot of guys who do. One of the other things that has changed with the uh, total adoption of digital cameras is that uh, 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, uh, a lot of people used to make pretty good money shooting uh, high school sports, little league sports, uh, you know, with their quality gear and making good images. I mean, a lot of those people were people that I shot alongside with at the NFL games and at the college games, and then they would do high school games on Friday night for to sell the pictures. This is much more difficult now. Uh, again, the availability of inexpensive, high-quality digital cameras and lenses may, means that, um, you know, dad and mom can get down there, too, and make pictures that they're happy with. Now, if I were to look at their picture versus the guy who's been shooting football for 20 years, I know the difference, but they don't, and it didn't cost them anything. Uh, this is also a big complaint from my friends who are wedding photographers, uh, and that's a whole, to hear them go off on that, that's a whole different thing. And, and it's, 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 it's a challenge in the field. Uh, the, that area, uh, a lot of the lower end wedding photography, uh, the lower end sports photography just isn't there anymore. 
And I think the answer is to make yourself better, to make yourself so much better that your stuff distinguishes itself no matter what, whether it's a wedding or a football game or a Little League baseball, whatever. You just got to be better. As we continue with the perils of digital, um, the iPad, iPhone photographer, uh, many of whom are working for the team who are posting social media. Uh, again, it's the team. What are you going to do? What are you going to say? Um, I know uh, at a soccer game when I had a class a couple of years ago, uh, there was a guy sitting right between one of my shooters and the goal. He had his iPad. He was he was reading on it. He was playing on it. All of a sudden, they drive down. There's a shot on goal. He leaps up and takes the shot, entirely blocking my student, who had waited patiently for this photo. This kind of stuff happens. It's another hazard of the field. Uh, it's not going to go away. It's just there. So those are a few more answers to questions I'm often asked. Uh, thanks for taking the time to watch. Uh, if you have questions, please send them in. Please email me. Please put them in the comment. We will be doing these shows regularly. So thanks again for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and have a great day. That's another story. Yeah, you know what? Leave with a minute to go. That's how I used to get the pizza in, in San Diego. Was all right. There's a minute left in the game. Nothing's going to happen. I'm going to go have pizza because by the time you wait till the end, then they close the tunnels because the players are going off. So essentially, you've waited five minutes, and there's seven guys who got up there have polished off all the 20 pizzas that were there, and you know that's it. <laughs>